In early December, uh, we'll say December 8th, I attended not one, but two Christmas parties. <laughs> uh, the first was work-related, and the second, well, take a look. Yes, so there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 when uh, Stephen, the guy that designed this shirt, uh, when he invited me, I wasn't quite sure uh, sure what to expect. So, I, I uh, thought it was just going to be a, a little meetup. Um, uh, Stephen was the former owner or co-owner of uh, the Record Mission in Ontario, California, and. Um, yeah, he 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 asked if I was available that evening, um, and so I headed over to the record store, and there was a party going on. <laughs> so um, yeah, very cool, um, and a big shout out, of course, to Stephen, and also Ryan, the current owner, and he was 
uh, the co-owner with Steven previously. So, uh, uh, I, I love their record store. It has an excellent, excellent vibe in there. They have some interesting stuff and I managed to find some interesting stuff. So, um, yeah. So Steven, again, thank you very much for inviting me. And, uh, it was, it was good seeing you again. So, um, and this shirt is available on Woot. So, uh, and you, you know, Christmas is come and gone at this point, but, uh, <laughs> but you can still order the shirt. Um, if you love the, the movie, A Christmas Story, um, you know, it's a tie-in to that. And it's a Christmas shirt with, you know, being much more subtle than, you know, blatantly Christmas. So the people in the know will get the shirt. So, <laughs> um, and if you don't get it, check out the movie, A Christmas Story. <laughs> um, yeah, one of my favorite Christmas movies, by the way. All right, so let's get down to it. Um, first of all, hello to everybody. Um, um, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. All right, so let's get down to it. You want to see some records, right? Okay. So, uh, the first one, and um, I've I've sampled it because um, I, I wanted to give a little more information about the music. So, the first one is, and this is still sealed, um, but I, I sampled it online <laughs> so I could actually talk about it. Uh, but this is Eric Burden. I used to be an animal. I am a huge, huge, huge fan of the animals. And, um, yeah. Uh, so when I saw this, I snatched it up. And Ryan uh, at the store gave me a, a good deal on these. Um, there was a sale going on um, because of the Christmas party. And then um, I he gave me a further discount as well. So that was very generous. Um yeah, so, um, well, <laughs> sadly, this album suffers from, uh, th there's, or there was a thread going around, I, I don't know if it's still active, but uh, it, it may have been started by James Griffith's um, albums that suffer from the 80s sound, and this is certainly one of them, <laughs> and it, which is maybe slightly surprising because this is from 1988. So you would think that, um, you know, you would have less of that, but no. <laughs> In fact, on the opening track, I used to be an animal. Um, that one especially suffers very badly and the song itself is pretty silly and yeah. Um, overall, this album is very, very hit or miss um it kind of ranges from uh 80s rock to and not in a good way <laughs> to uh some uh, there's there's some bluesy stuff on there um you can certainly tell he's not with the animals anymore <laughs> um yeah but the opening track, I mean, if you can get past that, you know, uh, you're, you're doing well. Um, and there, there, there's, there's a couple songs on here that probably make it worth it. <laughs> so, um, uh, let's see, we have, uh, going back to Memphis, um, sort of a, a bluesy ballad. It's pretty good. Pretty good. There's no great songs on here, so. <laughs> um, and then, oh, let's see. Uh, Run For Your Life. That one, that one's a pretty good uh, rocking song. And so th that one I was, I was pleased with. And I believe uh, I Will Be With You Again. I think that was another... Um, sort of bluesy ballad, and that, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Um, now, <laughs> I mentioned how bad the opening track was, but let me tell you, the, the song Leo's Place. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so it started, and I was thinking to myself, this sounds like, like the theme song for for a, an '80s sitcom. And then I started listening to the lyrics, and essentially the song is a ripoff of the theme song to Cheers. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, there's that one. <laughs> um, get it if you're a diehard Animals fan or Eric Burden fan, but be prepared for like a two-star album, definitely. Next up, we have... Commander Cody and his Lost Planet Airmen. And this is Lost in the Ozone. Please define this. And um, basically, this is some classic uh, honky-tonk, boogie-woogie, um, country rock, uh, that sort of thing. Very, very good. Um, definitely recommend this one. Now it, it, it does, and I'm going to use the word suffer, but I don't feel it, you know, it, it's a negative thing, but it does have that on several tracks. It has that classic, uh, twangy country sound. So <laughs> that's definitely going to put some people off, but, um, I love it. It has a very classic sound. So Yeah. Um, love this one. Yeah, so um, the big hit on here was Hot Rod Lincoln, definitely. Um, um, let's see. Again, there, there's so many good ones on here. I, I definitely recommend this album. Um, a standout track for me was uh, Daddy's Gonna Treat You Right. That's a really good one. Um, a, some of the songs actually invoke... Um, uh, 50s era um, rock and roll um, and I want to say I want to say uh, Beat Me Daddy 8 to the Bar it, it was one of the tracks It there are a couple live tracks that's one of them and I forget the other one that was, that was uh, recorded live but there's a couple tracks on here that were recorded live uh, that one Definitely has the boogie woogie sound. Um, I want to say 20 Flight Rock. Maybe that was one of the 50s sounding ones. Um, yeah. Uh, this one I, I definitely recommend. Commander Cody and his Lost Planet Airmen. Lost in the Ozone. Very good. Very good. Next up we have one of my favorite bands that I, I actually don't talk about a lot. Um, if you go back in my videos, um, I do show, I think, two or three albums that I currently have. And I was pleased to add this one. Rare Earth. Uh, this is Ecology. And for those that aren't familiar, it basically blues rock um, with some funky elements. Um they got their, their start in the 60s, and uh, I actually discovered them on a 60s compilation uh, by Time Life Music, and I have adored them ever since. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, this album does not disappoint, definitely. Um, They're all great tracks, but honestly, I have to say, the the biggest surprise for me and the standout track is their cover of uh, the Beatles' Eleanor Rigby, which, um, you know, being a huge, huge fan of Sgt. Pepper's, um, you know, that's one of the, the songs on there. So, you know, I hold it to a certain standard, and let me tell you, they do not disappoint um, basically, it, the song opens up, um, or the song starts, um, uh, almost like a, like a church choir, 
Um, and then it, it just really opens up into a, a blues rocky song and it, it's an excellent excellent cover of the song um i highly recommend it um maybe diehard beatles fans might not like it um it it definitely you know they've put their rare earth spin onto it so um and that's what i i like most in cover songs if you're gonna cover a song do it in your own style don't try and sound like the original and they definitely don't try and sound like the original definitely <laughs> <laughs> but definitely check out at least that track if not this whole album the whole album is really good really good i highly recommend it um especially if you like blues rock uh, very very good uh, uh rare earth ecology so there's that one okay this next one is by another one of my favorite bands or the last one i should say <laughs> is by one of my uh favorite bands and um, though this one isn't quite a grail, I was thrilled to pick it up. Their follow-up album would, would actually be more of a grail for me. Um, but the band is World Party. And this is uh, Private Revolution, their debut album. Um, and where this album really suffers is it's not, it's not as cohesive as their follow-up Goodbye Jumbo, which that album uh, is easily in my top 20, possibly, possibly in my top 10, possibly. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but this one's still very, very good. Uh, this is like from 86, 87. And the opening track, Private Revolution, does suffer a little bit from uh from that 80s sound um and then i don't like it when when bands have have song titles that are the same as their band name it's like even if the song isn't about them which i guess in most cases it wouldn't be but um it it i don't know <laughs> i just don't like it when they do that so um uh, but those complaints aside, the album is very, very good. They have been compared to uh, the Beatles, uh, ELO, and at moments, uh, including... What song was it? Uh, it may have been All I Really Want to Do. I could be wrong. <laughs> uh, I believe that's the one where... He he sounds a little bit like like a young Bob Dylan, um, yeah his his delivery especially. Um, so very good album, uh, not as good, not nearly as good as Goodbye Jumbo actually, but still a very very good album. Um, <clears throat> if nothing else, listen to the song Ship of Fools. That one is excellent, excellent. A good just alternative rock um, song. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, there you go. Um, I picked up four records uh, at a Christmas party. <laughs> so that was kind of unexpected. But, uh, uh, yeah, I was, I was glad I could um, further support... Uh, the Record Mission in Ontario, California. And again, a shout out to uh, Stephen and uh, Ryan. And uh, you guys always make me feel right at home in your, in your store. So. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time.